Hi. Hi again. It's so nice to see you on the other. It's weird because most of the times, at least in the last, what, three years, you meet people on Zoom first and then in person. And ours is the opposite. We met a person now on Zoom. There is an automatic AI companion, as you can see in here, because yeah. um, I, I like and I'll send you a copy as well. Okay. I um, I jokingly tell everybody I have eight employees <laughs> and they all live in my head. And so this AI tool is so helpful for me because I'm like, okay, I meet with so many people. So I'm so excited. Tell me about you. Tell me oh about you. Oh my gosh, so it's amazing. I love this AI thing you're doing. <laughs> I might need to find you for yeah. that. Wendy, <laughs> girl, I need some help. <laughs> I got a janitor, a marketing person, an operations, like they all in here like, honey, you got to figure out it because your brain is not designed for this card catalog you are forcing upon us right now. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I really appreciate your time. I know we're, um, yeah, we're opening up the first school of its kind in the USA. <laughs> it is literally a, um, it's a therapeutic cosmetology school for traffic survivors. And the reason why we are doing this is because when I was working as a social worker, you'll appreciate it, Cindy, like you would see people go through like it's almost like this revolving door, right? Where somebody would get into a safe house, they get help, they do all this trauma therapy, they get up to this level of like, wow, I've achieved some healing here. I want to like get off the streets for good. You know, where are the jobs? And if you've been arrested for prostitution multiple times, which a lot of these people had been, um, even though there were forces behind that, that, you know, it wasn't just some choice they decided to make and get up as a 15 year old and start selling themselves, as you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot that goes into that lifestyle. And so they've been in trouble. And when they try to go get a, a sustainable job, like really something that's going to keep a roof over your head, car insurance, a vehicle, I mean, upstate New York, there's no way to get around except for unless you move into the city and just stay on the bus system for the rest of your life, there's nowhere really to go without a vehicle. <laughs> and so I'm like, holy crap, okay, so the, the jobs that were available were minimum wage, unskilled jobs. And you're working with somebody that's trying to work with CPS to get their kids back. Their kids are never going to come back if you're flipping burgers. It's not going to happen. And so as a social worker, you would see this person all of a sudden at this level and they're slipping and they're going back. And all of a sudden they end up back in their same trafficking situation because at least they know they can make a living. You know, they need money and it's not available in the, the normal way that people just will get a job. And so as I started to look at this, I went to cosmetology school myself because I know cosmetologists make good money. Now, as a licensed master social worker, I didn't know how good. I'm like, I'm not going to sit up here and tell people what they should do if I haven't experienced myself and if I haven't gone through it to prove, is this a lucrative career? How do I know? So I, I got my cosmetology license. I opened up my own shop and I just started working behind the chair. And as I was doing that, I realized, oh, yeah, this is a way out of poverty. This is a way off the system. I'm making more money as a cosmetologist than I ever did one day working as a licensed master social worker, which is a very sad thing to say, but it's true. And here was the deal. There were no background checks in the cos world. None. Nobody background checks their barber, their hairstylist, their nail, their, you know, the estheticians. Like, they don't get background checked. And when I started to realize this, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> we've got a whole slew of people over here that need to make the kind of money that cosmetology offers, but they can't get a job without this license. But once they get this license, background checks go away. Like their past does not have to follow them. And when I realized that, I'm like, we need to open up a school and help these people get the licensure. And so that, but here's the deal. They're going to charge these girls 20 grand just to go get this license. They can't get the student loans that other students can get because they have prostitution records. It's not going to work. And then I'm working with survivors and I'm like, listen, they actually want to work with CPS. They want to make stuff right. They would like to have some kind of interaction with their children again. So when I'm realizing that, I, I said, you know, what works for you? Like, I need your feedback because... I can just run with a good idea that I think I have, but if I'm not working with the people that I'm aiming to serve, it's going to go nowhere. This is ridiculous. I'm doing this program for you, so you tell me what you need. And across the board, they were like, I need to be out of school by the time my kids get out of school. 
I'm like, perfect. We do nine to two, Monday through Friday. Because it's a thousand hour program with the state, I was like, if you have to miss some hours, we'll have makeup hours on Saturday. You come in nine to one, when and if you can, make up the hours that you had to miss during the week. And it's a done deal. And they were like, you can do that? I'm like, well, I'm going to. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm really developing this whole piece. And, you know, because of the LMSW stuff, I'm like, there has to be a therapeutic component. Like, you know, Cindy, we have to help people through their trauma. All of the cosmetology schools that I have been in, that I have went to visit, that, you know, I got my own license from, they're very punitive. You come in late three days, you're going home for the whole day, you're missing all those hours. Don't even bother coming in tomorrow. Really? I mean, is that really the way we want to treat people that are already coming from a very vulnerable situation that we're trying to help and aid? I don't think so. <laughs> and so when I started to look at that, I'm like, you know, we want to do this cosmetology school with restorative practices. I'm going to do the whole thing with restorative circles. Um, and then I've developed a little, it's kind of like an art therapy wall where they can just splatter paint all over the damn wall. Instead of sending somebody home, it's like having some kind of attitude. I'm understanding they're triggered. This is hard. You know, a thousand hour cosmetology program is not easy. I know that. But at the end of the day, if I can have therapeutic supports in place to help them get it out, get the anger out, let's, here's a, here's a, brave color journal. You're going to just put stuff in here. I don't need to see it. You're going to take that back to your trauma therapist and you can work that out with them. But if it can stop the rumination and if I can help direct them back to you're here because this, this license right here in this school is going to break you out of this crazy cycle. It's going to get you out of poverty. And so I want to have as many supports in place to help you through this, get you this license, and then from there, we've already started training salons to become trauma informed. So when we place our students, we know they're going to a very safe place. It's just, it's a no brainer, Cindy, to be honest with you. I don't know why this hasn't been a thing in, our, in the entire nation yet. I don't know. But here I am. I'm working with senators. I'm, you know, I told them, I'm like, listen, we need to get this school open. Senator Cooney for the New York, you know, he's like, I agree with you. I'm going to help you get some build out money. But um, it's like, what do you need? And when I got on the cosmetology website of New York State, they want to see two years operating expenses in my bank account before they will allow me to open the door. So I went back to the senator and I said, listen, this is what state board says. And they're telling me, don't even apply for a school unless you have those two years of operating expenses. And I'm like, this seems ridiculous that I need a million dollars to test a pilot program with eight students just to start. That's all I need. I'm like, can we get a waiver for this? And so we're meeting on November 27th to see if we can get a waiver for those two years operating expenses just to prove this therapeutic cosmetology program. I don't know if we're going to be granted that waiver or not. So in the meantime, I've got my grant writer that's helping me. She's like, okay, we're going to secure a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's fine and all. But at the end of the day, my phone is blowing up with people in safe houses. Miss Julie, can I come to your school yet? And I have to tell them we're not open. It's heartbreaking. November 27th, it is done. <laughs> it's done. We're going to see that as, oh, yeah, that's no brainer. Sure, pass that one up. It is done. <laughs> We're going to speak that one into existence, honey. It is done. Yeah. Like, but all you yeah. go in there, it's, it's sad that we got to tell y'all we should not write that. But Right. And um, the whole no brainer, we've been waiting on you, Julie. Like the yeah. universe waited on you to come along with this brilliant idea. Right. For enough people who say, well, what are we doing about it? Julie's doing something about it. And here are the guardrails that are trying to keep Julie from doing things about it. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Can I just do a shameless plug as you are on yeah. the journey? Absolutely. I would love an opportunity to help build the speaker's platform of any student that you run across that also wants to get behind a microphone through podcasting okay. or through sharing yeah. her story um, yeah. so that then we have another audience to reach and other voices that can be behind this cause, even if they don't live in New York. Maybe somebody yeah. will hear it and start a petition to change the law across the globe, you know, but right. um, if you have any aspiring uh, talent that, you know, has a bubbly personality that also wants to be behind a microphone, think of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to train, train other people to go out and like take their experiences, blend a little bit of the aces in it and then tell people, here's what I'm doing on the yeah. other end. You just never yeah. know how far I can travel. Right. 
Yeah. That's amazing. Right. I would love that, Sandy. Yeah. Keep, keep me in mind. Keep me in mind yeah. for that. I, definitely. I love the work you're doing. Oh my God. I'm like, yeah. this is what we need. Like we need people to understand that, you know, yeah. these these people are not in this situation for just a hell of it. And then wake up and make a bad choice one day. Are you freaking yeah. kidding me? <laughs> they were one stardust. Somebody that was a stardust and a little bit, a little bundle. It was not that that way we see it today. Like there's a right. backstory to that, honey. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in full disclosure, Julie, this is my third year into this organization, and I run into some of the same guardrails, not being able sure. to access certain grants because you've got to have a certain amount of revenue already sitting there. Lesson learned. So I am creating a course to teach other entrepreneurs before you quit your job. Yeah. Here are some of the rules that will keep you from being able to sustain yourself. Um, yeah. As a note, you know, so just like taking the lessons that I've learned and looking at the system that's not broken, it's broken. It's working exactly the way that it was designed and also making people aware of that before they right. take these leaps of faith trying to leave toxic workplaces, which I know is another issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So yeah. For sure. Um, you know, meanwhile, uh, what I've learned in these three years is that, A, it's hard to get money and also make a living for yourself while doing it this way. And I've, I've been privileged enough to dedicate three years of my time mm -hmm. to build this. And um, fast forward, the idea is to elevate the voices of lived experience survivors so that we draw more attention to the conversation that used to not be had. Right. Right. So. I really see that see this as a way to find people who have found comfort and safety in their story and their voice, and they can find ways to share that with others to bring in as many people along as we can. So essentially discovering talent like you're doing, right? right? Like just discovering talent and giving them a way where they can start building onto their resume and also making a living, you know, right. be paid yeah. to come on a Zoom and share your story, right? Like if, right. if, if, you know, so I really want to take people there. And I think that's just the way, obviously I got to help myself uh, while I'm helping others, but just keep that in the back of your mind as you think about ways we can continue to collaborate. Um, For and, sure. And just raise awareness to, honestly, I feel like a lot of people know this. I mean, I think when we speak of it, um, they may hear it differently. I think what I'm noticing, Julie, is just not a lot of bold people willing to come out and say it. Right. Yeah, like, we need a waiver. And I realize yeah. that that law has been there for a very long time for various reasons, da, 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 da. And we need a waiver. You know, how many people would find the courage to speak up against the three branches of government? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, seriously. There's some big old branches. There's some big old branches. I don't know. And oh all that's underneath it, you don't want to go up against them, honey. They will hang you like those. What are the ladies? The the ladies that they asked as witches back to say they will do you like yes. the witch trial. You try to go up against the three branches of government. So yeah, how can how how can I be of support to you? Well, Dr. Meeker thought that it would be a very very good idea for you and I to meet because she wasn't sure even if you are connected with the barber. The um you know how you were talking and you did that presentation. Is there a way for me to connect with him? What are the chances that would happen? I know. That is so crazy. I just oh, love Mother Nature. I just love her. Please. I know he's not very uh, responsive on email. He does have an assistant, but I would love to do that e-connect. I would okay. love There, it, it makes, duh. It's like he yeah. should know you. You should know him. And he's only been in it seven years. So this is his seven year and he's made that many strides. He was recently on Mel Robbins podcast. If you know who she nice. is. Nice. Yeah. Big, I, I, I listened to it. Follower, uh, yeah. I recognize her name. So he, um, just, yeah. So he's on one of her episodes in last month, I believe in October. It was awesome. So, um, imagine how he's grown in seven years. So please allow me to connect the two of you on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, and please tell him how we met. Yeah, I will. I definitely will, because that would be, I, I love that he's already working with stylists, you know, that are already licensed and helping them connect with mental health. And it was really interesting, Cindy, because we, we're a two-prong approach. So I'm trying to get the school open. But in the meantime, what I'm doing is I have a whole training program for already existing stylists on recognizing the red flags of trafficking because there was a trafficker in Rochester, New York, where I live. 
he was tried in the federal court system and he said that he was going to totally defend himself. He didn't need a lawyer. So in that process, as he was defending himself, he started talking about the grooming and the recruiting of these people and how he knew he would seriously go after vulnerable, vulnerable people that could not afford to get their hair done. They couldn't afford to get their nails done. And so that was a way for him to develop this relationship with them. Let me take you to go get your hair done. I'm going to take you to a salon. We're going to go get your nails done because he knew that if they, the better they look, the more money they're going to make. So that was, you know, a grooming and recruiting method to then later on exploit them. And so as he started talking about this, he was literally giving me everything that I needed to know about how he used the cosmetology field. And then he went on to say the beatings. He would never leave a bruise on a pretty face because you can't hit there. You got to hit him in the scalp where the hair covers everything. And so, I mean, I'm sitting there as a social worker and as a cosmetologist, and it was just like, I wanted to punch them, but the other part of me was like, keep talking, because you are giving me a bunch of training material that I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna train stylists so they know what to look for. How do you know if a victim is sitting in your chair? And then as the social work piece, how do you have those safe conversations with that person and offer them resources? They don't know that resources exist unless you open your mouth and tell them. And stylists don't know this information. It's not taught in cos school. It's not taught anywhere. So a lot of stylists would miss all of these red flags because they didn't know what it was. They knew something was off. But so we started this training and it got up to the level of the FBI. And from there, it went over to crime analysis unit and probation. So now what started out for stylists is in every other field. <laughs> but or like, you know, I'm like, but this is for stylists because stylists are going to see those scars on the head. They're going to see the branding where the crypts like literally are marking these females now as their own. It's property. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, this is real stuff. It's happening right here. I've got slides that show these traffickers and these marks right here in Rochester, New York. Can we please talk about this for a minute? This is not something that's happening in Cambodia. You know what I mean? I mean, it is, of course. But, right. oh, my God, Cindy. <laughs> so we got to gonna... sweep around our own front door. I mean, it's so quick yeah. to want to, you know, jump and solve other countries' issues. And, and hey, have you yeah. seen around the corner right by that 7-Eleven? <laughs> it needs some help, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. definitely, you're definitely uh, addressing a need and let somebody say, well, well, now what? Here's the now what? Like, you, yeah. you're asking and we're providing a now what? Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a no, it's a no brainer. And yeah, I'd like to support any way I can. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be uh, in good company with Dr. Meeker because that was um, a very good experience. And I love her story, like how she's yeah. been doing this for seven years and she finally got her break of cash that allowed her to bring all of us together. So definitely full circle. That was amazing. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. No, and I, I loved it. Like listening to you, <clears throat> I was like, again, it just, I mean, they go so seamlessly together. Like, you know, trafficked victims are trafficked for a reason. There's a lot of vulnerabilities there that have been preyed upon, yeah. you know, and if people aren't understanding that or seeing that, like, it's so, it's just such a, I get people all the time in the trainings. I mean, they just, they change after I train them, yeah. but they're like, they're just prostitutes. They just, yeah. they chose yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. OK, well, let's go through a few more slides here and then we're going to talk about that. <laughs> you got to blow your mind. You will never say that thing ever again after you let Julie open her mouth, honey. Like, watch this. OK, so I do want to pivot. Let me let me offer yeah. this two things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get your school, yeah, I um, would love to be a part of any training initiatives that you have related to ACEs matter or okay. ACEs and why they matter. Um, I yeah. definitely feel like there's some um, things I've piloted it like that art, that thing you shared, like helping yeah. people do that tangibly. We've got mm -hmm. some activities that we can do just to help people visualize pictures worth a thousand words. Yeah. And the main goal when we are introducing people to the conversation on ACEs is to help them walk away realizing that it didn't start with you. Right. It may be transcribed in you. However, you now control how that trauma gets watered, right? When you know, you can't fix it if you don't know. If you think you're just right. prostitutes, you can't fix it if that's your mindset. Until somebody yeah. adds something else to that mindset, you're going to be right. thinking they're just prostitutes. So I'd like to offer, obviously, if a budget and stuff allows at any point during this journey um, to, to bring in a, a customized ACES training for them. Okay. And then um, another focus for ACES Matter is to highlight protective factors, like I did mm -hmm. with 
Lorenzo at the training. Right. I recently was gifted a guest writer for Aces Matter that will write a monthly blog for us nice. highlighting something that is going okay. on that month. And I noticed that January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month. It is. Yeah. Is that something that you prioritize uh, advocating about? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So something we're pivoting to try new for 2024 after doing these three years of just telling people, hey, we got Aces. <laughs> now we're like, well, what do we do about it? So 2024, right. we're going to highlight somebody every month that's doing something about it. And it'll go out to over 2,000 different people until our audience continues to grow. Uh, probably more than 10,000 people will uh, get an opportunity to see it. Sure. But I was wondering if we could highlight Ms. Julie's school and some of your initiatives um, and then even include in our newsletter a way people can get involved and donate if, if you're at that stage yet. How does that Yeah, happen? we are. We are. Yeah, absolutely. That would be amazing, Cindy. I would love that. I just got an email yesterday. Um, I know you're not from the Rochester area, but um, they have, there's something called the International Athena Award, and it's huge. It's like the biggest awards um, here through the Greater Chamber of Commerce, you know, and um, I'm a finalist. <laughs> I just found out I'm a finalist. So um, they're going to announce the winner on February 1st, but um, the Chamber put out a whole news um I don't know, like a press release kind of thing. So they were like, yeah, you're going to be interviewed by all the newses and everything. So it would be perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, girl, I'll know. I <laughs> love it. So yeah, there I might love be it. You can talk about and highlight and because we are actively doing trainings. I just did a training today at a community awareness. I took them on a tour through our school space. You know, I just can't build out yet because we don't have the, all the funds, but we have the space. It's in a historical building right down here in um, Rochester. It's called the Silly Building. It's actually beautiful. It, it's wonderful <laughs> where they're putting us. And so I'm really thrilled about it. They're just kind of holding the space for us for a year because they expect that I'll have either my money or the waiver. One way or the other, this school is opening. That's all I'm saying, Sandy. I don't, I don't know what way it's going to go, but we're opening. <laughs> My drop. Okay, I have to ask because yeah. AI is recording this. Can I turn this into a podcast and include yeah, it in absolutely. our blog? Yeah. I want to give people a place to support, right? Like, obviously, y'all can donate to us because we make brochures and printed material. We pass them out. But I also want to, like, tell people about your organization and give them a chance to support something that's tangible. They'd like to have their hands on that. So uh, I'm going to convert. I'll, I'm going to get my person to convert and edit this and turn it into, like, a, a MP3, not okay. with the video, but... Yeah. Uh, to capture this and then I'll send it to you to proofread. Um, I'll send you a copy of the recording. And then the lady who's writing our blog, her name is Lisa King. She's a guest writer. Okay. I'm going to give her your email with your permission. Um, yeah. She's going to draft something up. She's going to research your organization and she's going to write it in her own words, her summary. She'll listen to our call and then we'll send to you what we want the write up to look like. And then if you want to approve or ask for any changes, we'll get all of that done before the end of December. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Is awesome. Awesome. Oh my gosh, okay. You're making so my job happy. easier. I just need to know that. You're making my job a lot easier. So we're going to do that. And then as far as Lorenzo goes, I'm going to connect you guys on LinkedIn because I know he's a lot more active on LinkedIn than he is okay. on email. And um, <laughs> just take it from there. I hope something comes of that because I definitely feel like y'all should know each other. Yeah, I think so, too. I think that it would be really, uh, I mean, it's almost like seamless that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're you're helping people with the mental health aspect. And I mean, that's just the thing of it. You know, of course, we, we talk about victims and survivors, but I mean, let's just be honest. Traffickers don't, they're not born that way. Do you know what I mean? They've got, I know they've got a ton of aces going on in their life as well. And you're raised in complete poverty, maybe without any kind of caring parent whatsoever. The street becomes almost like your parents. So how, why would you expect somebody to turn out differently if this is what they're seeing around them? You know, you get into the gang stuff and that's a whole community of its own that presents as family. I mean, you know, Sandy, I don't need to tell you all this, but girl, I mean, you know, there's I'm, a I'm, whole, I'm with you. yeah, there's, there's just a whole life behind all of that. And it boils down, people want to be accepted and they want to be loved. Well, if you don't have parents at home or somebody that's in a healthy way loving you at home, but this gang is like, I 100% accept you. Okay, we've got to sell some drugs, maybe kill a few people. Okay, if I'm going to be accepted and loved, you know, it's not like really all that mind boggling for me to understand how people get into those situations. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. However, there are, I do think that, you know, with, with professional health and like with you, you know, training people on ACEs and what this can mean in their life and how certain choices were made because of these things, you know, I think that that helps some people. Now, Andre Barnes, he wasn't so quick to what, I mean, he literally told the judge in the courtroom, he said, you better put me away for a good long time because as soon as I get out, I'm going back to trafficking. I can make more money on those girls than anything else in this world. And so he kind of had his mindset that this is what he wants to do and this is what he's going to continue to do unless he's put away. Mm. So, so you, <laughs> you, know what? Like, like that, you know, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's choices. And I feel like, listen, informed consent, as long as you let people know about the ACEs, as long as you offer them the resources and the, the places to be able to get help that they need to change. And if they still decide not to, well, that's on them. Yeah. But at least it's an informed decision. Yeah. You know, what are we doing to people that don't have this? They don't know that there's resources. They don't know that there's help. They don't understand the ACEs. What are we doing for people like that? They're just becoming criminalized. Like yeah. there was a suicidal person in Livingston County. Now I live in Monroe County. Mm -hmm. Livingston is maybe a half hour away, but they don't really, the, the police officers don't really work with the mental health field at all. So they get this call that somebody's suicidal. Well, they go out and the guy has a gun. They tase him, they handcuff him, and then they throw him in jail. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this could have been so easily handled. Had you taken a mental health professional with you, let somebody talk, listen, listen to what this man is saying. If you can connect them to life, you know, there's a whole lot that you can do that does not have to go into the criminal anything whatsoever. Yeah. Aces are coming. Holy like winter is coming. Oh, Aces yeah, are coming. So you, we, we don't have a choice but to get trained. We can't lock right. everybody up, and everybody right. can't move to the Joneses neighborhood, right? right? So, exactly. um, I think what we're doing with our missions is holding people's feet to the fire while making yeah. it feel like a massage. It's yeah. just what it is. You want to feel safe. And and who's to decide the lesser of two evils? Because he right. wants to pimp. Because he doesn't have. Uh, an education right. that is strong enough for him to even make the type of money that he needs to make to care for himself. And let's say, hope he doesn't have a disease because now you've got the medicine. And then if he's got a right. criminal background. So right. who's to say which career is the lesser of two evils? Either way it go, multimillionaire yeah. in your mansion, in your comfy home, not having to think about ACEs or person who has to make a decision to rob somebody or go hungry. Who's right. to decide the lesser of two evils? Right? right. And I think the more we can say we are only here having this conversation because we haven't had it for so long. Right. That is the exactly. only reason why we're here. We have been quiet long enough. <laughs> right. And clearly here are the results of quiet. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, we can continue to be quiet and it's going to cost yeah. us. It's going to cost a lot. And it's it going to cost a lot. And it may be yeah. your family that it may be your daughter that gets picked up and trafficked. Right. Um, even though you thought you had the perfect home for this child. So let me let me uh, ask you, have you heard of a, a YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly? No, I'm writing this down. I highly encourage you to proceed with caution because it is very raw. But you understand raw because of the work that you're doing. Yeah. You will have an abundance of content of young women who have been trafficked in California on Skid Row. The author moved from, I mean, the guy who produces the show, he's got a couple million subscribers. I learned about it when I started doing the ACEs work. It is very hard to watch, but if yeah. you ever want to go see somebody else that's now forcing people to pay attention to what's happened, he's built his subscriber count to 2 million. Wow. That's by interviewing the sex workers and yeah. asking them about their childhood. Now, even though he doesn't, he doesn't use ACEs, he just lets them tell him like why they can't get out. Right. Soft underbelly, um, not enough people know about it. And I do personally believe the people that are watching it are a lot more traumatized people. So they're watching it without getting solutions, right? They're just watching right. like, this is what happens. But you happen to be a solution for so many of those young women and men yeah. that are doing these interviews with this guy for probably a couple hundred bucks. So wow. if you decide to watch it, I'd love to know what. Oh, yeah, I will on. definitely. Um, yeah, we, for um, sure. Yeah, I, somebody exposed me to it, and the show, all it did was affirm what I, what I had learned about well, you already it. Know. Like, it makes yeah. sense. They're not just prostituting. Like, look at this person's childhood history based on, and it hurts for them to even tell. You can look at them as they're tell, trying to tell the story. So it's a powerful, in your face, you can't skip this commercial understanding of why people go into trafficking. Right. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. That. I um, definitely well, we're going to stay in touch. I'd like to follow up with you again in December. You'll probably hear from me before then, but I will commit to connecting you and um, 
Lorenzo over uh, LinkedIn and, and let okay. me know how that goes. Okay, I will. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Cindy. Yeah. I really look forward to continuing our conversation for sure. Thank you.